Hello everyone, this is Daniel and Kelly from fitnessblender.com and today is our first day of the five day workout challenge for busy people. So this free five day challenge is gonna have everything you need for five days of very effective, very intense workouts. The only thing you're gonna need is a dumbbell and even if you don't have dumbbells, you can always improvise or even do it with no equipment at all and still get in a great workout. Now we're gonna be showing you, uh, Kelly and I are both gonna be in the video, and we're gonna be showing you intermediate, beginner, and advanced versions of all these exercises. So it doesn't matter what level you're at, you're gonna be able to follow right along. We're doing this free five day challenge in celebration of our new eight week program for busy people featuring workouts 30 minutes or less, which is coming out November 2nd. Otherwise, this is going to be completely free. It's fun, it's meant for any fitness level, so be sure and follow along and tell everyone you know they don't wanna miss it. It is a great way to challenge your friends and family to doing a little bit of a workout with you. It only lasts a week, so they have no excuses. Yeah, and honestly, if you put in uh, the effort, you work hard, and you watch your, make sure you're eating clean during these five days, you can notice a difference even by the end of just this one single week. Just slight difference, and but you're going to feel better, your energy is going to be better. It's totally worth it. Just, I dare you to try it. <laughs> So without any further ado, let's get started with our first day. So we're going to be going through strength and hit in this. So we're going to be getting a little bit of everything through your entire body. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started with our warm-up. We're going to get those feet moving in a boxer shuffle. We're doing each one of these for 25 seconds straight through. No breaks. We're just going to be moving right into the next one. So we're doing a boxer shuffle right now. Our next one is going to be a high knee jack. So this is a pretty quick, efficient warm-up. If you've been moving around throughout the day, this is going to be enough. If you've been sitting at your computer for hours upon hours, you might want to do a little bit more of a warm-up. So we're keeping these nice and quick for the 30-minute program. All right, All right, so high, high knee jacks. jacks. Bring one knee up. Arms move just like a regular jumping jack. It's just you're bringing one knee up at a time. Start with a relatively limited range of motion. Start trying to bring that knee up higher and higher. Starting to move a little bit faster as well. Got warrior lunges coming up next. About five seconds. Two, one, right. All right, down and kind of a push up. Come up for your lunge. Go back down and then switch feet. Now, if you have trouble going down into a full plank position, then you can do this off on the edge of a bed or a chair to bring yourself up a little bit higher, it makes it a little bit easier. Otherwise, all the way down on the ground to get a little more range of motion. All right, what's next? All right, we got walk, walk down, down back bows. So walk out with those hands, down flat, arms and legs come up, and walk back up. Again, this is another really difficult one. If you have a lower strength upper body, or a lower strength than you your upper body, to your knees. <laughs> you can either go off your knees, or again, Bend your knees when you're walking down. All right, two front kick taps. So kick, kick, tap down, go up on the other side. So this is a big one for balance. If you need to, you can hold on to a chair, countertop, a wall, whatever you need to, to make yourself feel more stable. You can always move slower than we do, or faster. Mm -hmm. You can always limit your range of motion also. So if you have bad knees, just don't go down quite so low. Alternating lunges. So it's a traditional alternating lunge, nothing fancy. Just step out and back up. Again, step out only as far as is comfortable. If you want a limited range of motion, that's fine. Or if you want to make it harder, the further you step out, the lower you go, the harder it gets. Just a few more of these and we'll move into squats. Alright. Alright, so regular squat, feet just about shoulder width apart. Squat down as low as is comfortable, right back up. Again, limit that range of motion if you need to. Otherwise, try to get as much range of motion as possible. Nice flat back, even though you're not using any weight with this, you still want to practice clean form. All right, last one, up and out jack. So, regular jumping jack, and then in front. Whoops, <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> want to make this low impact, all of these exercises just take out the jumping. So just step, just 
break it down as simple as you can if you need low impact. Oops! Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, All right, so. keep those feet moving again. We're going to be moving into the next section here in just a second. Alright everyone, we're going to be starting into our hit and strength portion. This is going to be really quick. I'm doing 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for the hit portion and 8 repetitions for the strength portion. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first up we're doing a kick up plus a lunge. Daniel's going to show you the easier version, stick with me for the harder version. Here we go. Up, step through, and go into a lunge. Stay on one side, we'll do two reps, or two intervals on one side, and then switch sides. So I'm showing two different versions here. This is the easiest version. It's just a reverse lunge. You're just stepping behind you nice and slow, small range of motion. I'll show you the other versions here Break. in just a second. So right back into that boxer shuffle. Keep those lungs open. Three seconds. All right, same leg, here we go. All right, so intermediate version is down. Kick those heels together, step back into that lunge. Kick those heels together, step back into that same lunge, same leg, and then switch. So kick those heels, now on the other side, so two and two. So for this harder version, the ultimate goal is to try to kick up and go directly into the lunge without putting your foot down. So it's a big challenge on balance. All right, that's two down, we got two more rounds to go. We're switching so sides. Keep focusing on that range of motion. So again, the easier version is just a step back lunge, a reverse lunge. You want to make it a little bit harder, then you go down, tap those heels, then into that reverse lunge. So this is working your entire body, upper body, lower body, core, every single muscle is working. All right, one more round to go through. Two, one, here we go. Every time you do that lunge, try to make sure that upper body comes straight up and down. Two, one. All right. Let's keep moving again. All right, All right, that was the end of our fourth. So that means we're moving into our strength portion. We're gonna be doing deadlifts for this. We're only doing eight repetitions, only one set. So pick the heaviest weight you can. All right, so I'm going really nice and light since I'm showing the easier version. I've got uh, 24 pounds per hand, 48 total. But whatever you're lifting is going to be specific to your own strengths. That's right. So here we go. So I'm only using 15 per hand. Nice flat back. Slight bend in those knees. Down as low as you can go. Right back up again. If you don't want to use weight, that's perfectly fine. You don't necessarily need it. But if you want to get a little more muscle development, you want to use as much weight as you can control. Here's our third one. So since we're doing eight repetitions, you should be picking a weight that makes those last few reps, number six, seven, and especially eight, very difficult to complete. But if at any point your form starts to suffer, you want to lower your weight or drop it all together. Is anyone counting? That's six. Okay. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> One more. All right, next up we have jump squats. All right. So, 20 on, 10 on, four times through. Um, pretty brutal exercise. Alright, Kelly's doing the harder version, I'm doing the easier version. So I'm not even doing a jump, I'm just dropping down, touching the ground and coming right back up. If you want to get a little extra work into it, then you can drop down, up onto those toes nice and high. Down, and up on those toes to activate those calves just like you would for the jump squat. Alright, one down, three to go. Even during your rest periods, you're never still. Do at least a boxer shuffle. Here we go. Try to land soft. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Two, one. Ooh. All right, keep those feet moving. Keep those lungs open, try to recover as best you can. Here we go. And again, squat down nice and low for the easier version. Up onto those toes as hard as you can. For that extra little oomph, the faster you go, get a little more uh, explosion technique into it. 
try to pop up a little bit faster, but only if you can control it, only if it's comfortable. Again, you can always limit that range of motion as far as how low you squat down. All right, that was number three. Yep. One more. One more. All right. Two, one. Here we go. Try to stay explosive, but if you need to, even if you are doing the hunter's version, feel free to join Daniel. Even for just a second before you go back in the harder version. And let it relax. Right. Okay, we're going, right. that was the last one of those, right? Yeah. So we've got our strength exercise, which is going to be an alternating clean and press. So you need a dumbbell for this one, just one. So I'm gonna drop that out. All right, I'm gonna do 15 pounds. And I'm using 10 pounds for a little bit easier ver uh, version here. This is all based off of how much weight you're lifting. So if you want it easier, okay. just use less weight. So eight reps per side. All right, so start up. You're gonna squat down the middle, pop it up to your shoulder, and then overhead, back down the shoulder, back down the ground. Down the ground, come back up before you grab it again. So really we're sneaking in an extra squat. You can't have enough squats. <laughs> There's three. So even if you're using a weight that's really light and easy for you to control, make sure you still get used to that kind of popping motion to get that form down for when you do actually increase weight. Is that seven? Eight. Halfway done. Remember, like I said, drop the weight if you need to. If you want to make sure you're keeping a flat back, perfectly flat back the entire time, you're driving through with those legs rather than with that back. And then at the top, once you get it up to that shoulder in that rack position, then you're going to use those legs again to pop it the rest of the way up. Okay, get those feet moving again. We'll be back to start into our next group here in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the second half of this strength and hip routine. Here's our last portion, and then when we're done with these next three groups, we're going into our cool down. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first exercise is going to be a sumo to ski squat. So Kelly's doing the harder version again. So nice and slow, just alting back and forth. If you're doing the easier version, limit that range of motion if you need to. Halfway. Three. Two, one, right, one down, three to go. Back in that boxer shuffle, never stop moving on those uh, pauses, on those breaks. Three, two, one, start it up. Feet together, feet apart. Again, remember to try to land nice and soft. Part of the exercise is practicing control over your own body, and that includes landing. Five seconds. You might be noticing by now, we're going to be well under 30 minutes, but the legs are already toast. Here we go. I know I felt it in my legs during the water break. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be careful to stretch out really well today. 10 seconds left. Three. Those feet move as best you can. Lungs open. 
Pushing that range motion at speed as much as is comfortable. There you go. Last one. Try to make it all the way through, but take a break if you need to. 10 seconds. Next up we have kettlebell swings. If you don't have a kettlebell, a dumbbell works just fine. That's what we're using. I'm going to be using something nice and light for my kettlebell swing. If you yeah. don't have a weight, that's perfectly fine. You can just kind of mimic the motion. You'll still get a good work through those legs as well. Ready? Mm -hmm. Doing 25. Here we go. So your arms are doing almost nothing. The, all the momentum comes from that pop of your hips. Keep your back perfectly flat. Make sure you're breathing. Squeeze those glutes as you press them forward. You want pretty much all of this coming from those legs. Your upper body just kind of moving along with the motion of the momentum from that kettlebell or that dumbbell. You're kind of using those legs and those hips to kind of drive that motion forward. You're not really using your shoulders to lift those arms at all. Okay. No more repetitions? Nope. Not a clue either. <laughs> and nobody really cares. Just keep going. Three more. Three, two, one. And relax. And that's how you do it when you forget. Doesn't matter. Just keep it going until you feel like you're getting a pretty good workout out of it. All right, next up we're doing plank jacks. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Watch Daniel for the Ready? easier version. Yeah. Here we go. And let's start. All right, so easier version. Kelly's doing the harder version with a full extension on those legs. The easier version is actually just going to be walking those knees in and out. So you're actually using your weight off of your knees, just walking them in and out. If you want to make it even easier, go up to a full extension of those arms. That elevated range of motion will make it just a little bit easier for you. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. So this is definitely the difference <clears throat> between working out like you need it and mindlessly plugging away on a treadmill for hours at a time. This is definitely way more effective, such a more efficient use of your time and energy, and honestly you're going to get way better results than you would on any clunky piece of, clunky piece of gym equipment. Oh, better relax. We don't even have gym membership, uh, gym memberships anymore. We haven't for quite a while. <laughs> don't necessarily need them to get a really good workout in. Here we go. If you need to, you can stop here or even drop here until you feel like you've caught your breath and get right back into it. We're doing weighted bridges after this. So if these are still too hard for you, you can do them up against a wall for those uh, for an extended leg, or you can do it against like a bed frame or a high counter. Just make sure it's something that's not going to scooch out of the way. Just basically alter the motion, try to keep the core principles. So some kind of motion where you're leaning forward at an angle. And let it relax. All right, we're off to bridges, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing this without weight. Kelly's going to make it a little bit harder for herself by actually using a dumbbell with it. Uh, whichever way you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Just whichever one you want to challenge yourself with. Yep. All right, so if you're using weights, put them right about hip bone level. If you've got two, other ways, just right in the center. Bring those heels in as close as comfortable. Right. Press into those heels and squeeze them up. Nice tight squeeze at the top, slowly back down, keep a little bit of a hover at the bottom, don't actually let it touch, and then right back up. Here's number four, halfway done already. 
Remember, exhale, the hardest part of the motion. Remember, because we're doing so few repetitions, try to push yourself as hard as you can each time. Two more. Alright, there's our last one. Alright, get right. back up for our last group of two. Got it. Alright, get back into that box of shuffle. You don't have to put those weights away. We're we starting into those last group, like Kelly said. Doing a two high knee switch foot. Two knee switch foot. Two so, knee switch foot. One, two, switch. So this is just so, as fast as you can move. And obviously I'm doing a lot slower because I'm doing the slightly easier version. You just do whatever is comfortable as far as control goes. You can always speed it up as you become more comfortable. You can always squat down lower as you become more comfortable. Alright, back to that boxer shuffle. One down, three to go. Keep Three, those lungs open. Two, one. Remember, if you want to make it harder on those legs, stay lower. Bend your knee a little more, go into a deeper lunge. Right, let's keep moving again. Halfway done. We're so close. <laughs> Almost there. Two, one, there we go. Just because I'm going slower doesn't necessarily mean that this has to be easier. Like I said, the lower you squat down, if you want to get really nice and low, try to do that motion really, really low, it's going to make those glutes have to work like crazy to hold that position. So, so whatever is most comfortable for you. One more. Yep. Alright, get those feet moving. Nice big full deep breath, trying to recover. Three, two, one. Okay, let's try to move quick. Alright, get those feet moving. We're moving into our last strength exercise. This is going to be a double dip squat, so if you want to use extra weight for it, by all means grab that weight. I'm going to be doing it with just body weight. I think Kelly's choosing to get a little extra weight in there and make it a little harder for herself. We'll it's just going to be. Yeah. It's just going to be a traditional squat, but when you drop to the bottom, you give yourself a little bit of a pause. Do a little bit of a range of motion, like just a couple of inches at the very bottom, and then come right back up again. Make sure it's all very, very slow. Right, you ready? You ready? All right, eight repetitions. Go. Nice and slow down. Pause at the bottom, just a couple of inches, and right back up. Again. Squeeze. Yeah. Keep everything nice and tight. Even if you're not using any weight, you want to really focus on that form. Perfectly flat back, mimicking the angle of your shin to the angle of your chest. Four, four reps between you and a cool down. <laughs> Again, limit the range of motion if you need to, if those hips or knees are uncomfortable with too much of a squat. Otherwise, full, the, the largest range of motion you can without letting that form slide. Uh, that's more? it. Is that it? You want to do one more? No, let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eight repetitions. All right, so keep those feet moving. We're going to be moving directly into our cool down. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to bring our heart rate down relatively slow. That's why we're still moving those feet a little bit. Try to let that heart rate drop slowly. Try to get as much oxygen into your bloodstream as possible. So, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Alright, let's move into that first stretch. We're going to do just a traditional straight leg hang. So feet just about shoulder width apart or narrower. Drop straight down. Keep that back flat at first. And hold it. Nice full deep breath. Go ahead and round that back over. Keep stretching down. Well, I didn't have my flat back. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not paying attention to class. <laughs> Let's come up really quick for an overhead stretch. Stretch your arms out all the way. Slowly pressing the range of motion the entire time overhead. Lean back and forth just a little bit on each side. Really smoothly and gently. One more time, and we'll fold back over. 
All right, same way down. Stretch out your fingers, everything. Push. And then lean forward, reach for your toes. So if you have to stop right here, that's perfectly fine. Everywhere, everybody starts somewhere different. You have to respect your body and listen to its messages. Never push to the point, especially during stretching, where you're feeling pain. You basically you just want to go as far as you can while still keeping a straight leg. So quadricep stretch next. Mm -hmm. Standing up straight and tall. If you need to grab hold of something for balance, that's perfectly fine. Grab that toe, pull it to that heel into your butt, pull that knee back behind you. If you can't quite reach your toe, just kick it up on uh, like a chair seat or something like that. Just trying to focus on trying to stretch that leg back behind you, getting a stretch to the, the front of that, that quadricep, the front of that thigh, uh, and a little bit even into the front of that foot. Nice full deep breath. Try to let your body relax slowly. See wobbly leg muscles. Mm -hmm. Give me jello legs tomorrow. <laughs> Which we're taking into account. Don't think that you have to skip day two because you're sore from today. You will probably so be sore from today if you've picked a heavy enough weight and pushed yourself hard enough. So tomorrow we'll be focusing on cardio, core, and upper body. But it's going to be another awesome workout, so don't miss it just because you're sore from this. We'll so be sore with you. <laughs> get those feet just about shoulder width apart, a little bit wider. We're walking out into a downward dog, so hands about shoulder width. Legs as straight as you can. Keep that chest straight, press down, and then stretch those legs out as you can as they start to loosen up on you a little bit. And feel free to rock back and forth. Just kind of work through the range yeah. of motion. Find parts where you're tense, mm -hmm. tight muscles. We know a lot of stretches can be really, really intense as far as the feeling. So fold one leg under your body and set up so you get a nice core stretch. You're also stretching out your hip flexor, back extended leg. And if you can't quite get down to this full range of motion, just stay elevated up a little bit, a little bit more weight in your hands until you can actually sit all the way back. Now lean forward a little bit and you should feel it through the hamstrings of the leg that's folded underneath you here. Just feel it kind of underneath the, that thigh a little bit. Alright, go ahead and switch sides. Hold the opposite leg underneath. First, sit back as much as you can. Like I said, within a range that's comfortable. You don't want to feel any kind of pain. Take some nice deep breaths. Your heart rate should be slowing down. You should no longer be gasping for breath at this point. And just like with the, uh, the warm up in the beginning, if you feel like you need more of a cool down, remember this is an express version of everything. We have longer workouts. We have 30 minute stretching videos if you like those. Um, do whatever you need to, but otherwise, this quick um, <laughs> cool down should be enough. <laughs> Like this, do a butterfly stretch. So feet in nice and close together, pull them in as close to the inside of your thighs as you can. You can grab hold of those toes to hold them in if you want to, but trying to use the outside of that thigh as much as you can to pull those knees down towards the ground. So you should feel a stretch to the inside of that groin, inside of that thigh. Just keep pulling them down as far as is comfortable. <laughs> nice flat back. Just keep those lungs open, let everything else relax as much as you can. Okay, let's reach for our toes for just a second to stretch out those calves a little bit. So even if you can't reach your toes, pull them up towards you, point them up towards your body, and you're going to get a good calf stretch through here. If you can, if you have the flexibility, both point your toes towards yourself and lean down towards them a little bit, you'll get a little bit through the back of the legs and deepen that calf stretch. Another way to do it if you're really, really tight through your hamstrings is keep your knees slightly bent, roll your toes in towards you, grab those toes, then very slowly start pushing those heels out until you start getting that stretch to that calf or into that hamstring, whichever one you're going for. Ooh, and my legs are really tight. I did a pretty rough leg routine a few days ago and I'm still feeling it, so my range of motion is suffering a little bit. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. So these 30 minute workouts are more than enough. 
If you feel like you would like to do more, we have tons of stretching videos and we also have a lot of low impact workouts to choose from. Otherwise, you really don't need anything else. Anything else could be borderline overtraining, so just trust the process. Know that what you just did was more than enough for your body. And otherwise, just like I said, stretching and low impact is what you want to stick to. And, and go off of how your body feels. So if you're done with, this, with today's routine and you feel like you could do a little bit more, then you didn't push yourself hard enough in today's routine. Right. You need to go back through and adjust what your maximum level of effort is for each one of those exercises. Because once you're done with this, you should feel completely yeah. spent. Like you <laughs> don't want to do anything yeah. else. So That's the whole point. if you're coming to us uh, <laughs> in the comments saying, hey, this was really, really easy, it wasn't us. Yeah. So <laughs> that means you, you should... need to check yourself. <laughs> yeah. Check your form, check the amount of weight you're using, check your intensity level. There is so much you could do to make these exercises just ridiculously hard yeah. without uh, uh, changing up the, the form of it very much. So definitely push yourself as hard as you possibly can and this will be all you need. So otherwise, eat clean today. And by eat clean, we mean real food, yeah. fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Stick to the simpler, the better. And drink tons of water. Mm -hmm. Water is very, very important. Especially since, I mean, you can look at both of us, we're getting a pretty good sweat going on. I'm sure you are too. You need to have as much fluid in your system as possible for your body to function as, as uh, properly as it can. So the more fluid you have in your system, the more your body functions as far as trying to get your uh, the waste products out, as far as trying to re-energize your cells, as far as getting, you know, glucose back into your system and all that kind of good stuff. So you want to make sure you're really well hydrated. Any kind of uh, amount of dehydration can actually limit your uh, activity level as far as your intensity level goes. Mm -hmm. So water is very, very important. And we're not talking about sports drinks, we're talking no, about just, just water. water. <laughs> nothing nothing with calories, nothing for with it. electrolytes. <laughs> you don't need those electrolytes, you just want straight water. Yeah. So otherwise, good job guys. This workout is complete. We will see you tomorrow for day two. Bye bye.